about a month ago. Dr. Jerome Corsi told me I had to see this film, Dreams from My Real Father, directed by Joel Gilbert, who's joining us via video Skype for TV and radio listeners here in just a moment, a story of Reds and Deception. And he started telling me the claims in the film. It wasn't out yet, and I was sent a screener a few weeks ago. And after I saw it, it fit into a lot of the research we've done. Again, we don't know who Obama is. That's been proven. It was just in the news yesterday in the Daily Mail, Obama's grandfather tortured by the British, a fantasy like most of the president's own memoir. And they now have had to admit the White House came out what last year and said, well, a lot of the memoir is just a composite and what we'd like to say. It's, it's, it's fiction parts of, I mean, his name was Barry Sotero. He had this other name. He looks nothing like the Kenyan dad. The State Department had his dad thrown out saying it wasn't his dad. He had a dead person's social security number. Everybody knew him as Barry, all these other fake names. Nobody's got stuff sealed. His Harvard, you know, papers have been sealed, but then we get some of them. We get uh, his publicist for 17 years, 16 and a half years saying he was born in Kenya. His wife on in speeches saying just five years ago, four years ago, he was born in Kenya. We went back to his homeland, Kenya. His grandmother saying it. The records are cut out over there, but then... Did she go over there to have that story that he was born there and then later they changed it? I don't know. Because the guy they say is his daddy. It'd be like if they showed uh, James Earl Jones and said, well, his last name's Jones. He's Alex Jones' daddy. He'd say, it looks nothing like Alex Jones. The Kenyan dad, totally different shaped skull, different nose. You know, it, it, you can tell the different African tribes by the way they look. Look nothing like Barack Obama, who looks like he's about 80% white. Well, dreams from my real father, it, 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 it's unbelievable. And it's got shocking research and, and, and supposedly Obama's mother in compromised positions. And then I was thinking back, wait, Bill Clinton's mother was an admitted lady of the night. And the guy they said was his dad wasn't his dad. And then we know she frequented with Governor Rockefeller. And then I looked into that, you know, 15 years ago, and it was all true. And then his mother dies right as he's elected. Obama's mother dies right as he's elected. <sighs> Amazing. And, and so this is the type of people they want, totally compromised. His mother's CIA, his grandmother's CIA, the granddaddy, that's all admitted. So we don't really know who this guy is. We know his mother is who they say, from my research. Now, we have this video discounted. It just came out this week at Infowars.com. You also get a free citizen rule book. It supports us, supports the filmmaker. Uh, this is a very powerful film. It's available again at Infowarsshop.com. You've got to see it. We're going to, for, for people watching on the video stream, we're going to show some side by side photos and things. We'll describe these for radio listeners on XM and other uh, stations out there, terrestrial stations. But it is powerful. You've got to see it. Because I was kind of like, yeah, there's some evidence. I put it in. And it's like, whoa. And caution, if there's children watching, they cover up the genitals and things, but it is somewhat pornographic as well. So just be aware of that. But this is coffin nails politically to Obama. And the point is, even if he's a puppet, he's totally blackmailed by foreign interest. We're in grave danger, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this guy is not who he says he is. Now, the director is Joel Gilbert. I'm not going to try to even go over all of his uh, bio, but he is a contributing editor for National Security and Foreign Policy, FamilySecurityMatters.org, and appears frequently as foreign policy analyst, national radio shows, TV, uh, major institutes, briefing councils, briefing um, governments, you name it. I'm not going to get into his whole bio, uh, but uh, he uh, joins us here today and uh, Joel, this is really scary stuff. I mean, I, I, I would imagine you're watching your back. I'm going to try to shut up and give you the floor, but this is pretty compelling. I have a lot of questions. Tell us about yourself, how you discovered this, and, and, and your basic thesis uh, about who this guy really is. Uh, again, thank you for joining us. Okay, great to be here, Alex. Thank you. Uh, I got into this really accidentally. If you look over my shoulder, if you can see on the Skype, I produced a film a couple years ago called Atomic Jihad. Ahmadinejad's coming war and Obama's politics of defeat. And when I researched that film, I watched over 200 speeches of Barack Obama, and I noticed something very strange. Every time he spoke about 
the rich and the poor, he, he became very excited. His voice went up a full octave, and he would scream and be so happy, and then he'd go to another subject and he'd be calm again. And that set me off to think this guy has a passion for class struggle. It was very obvious, but it did not fit his background. I knew he went to an exclusive prep school, he went to Harvard Law, so I read his book, Dreams from My Father, and I saw many, many references to Marxism. He specifically went to Occidental College. He arrived at Occidental College at age 18, admittedly, as a committed revolutionary Marxist. He went into organizing. He went into socialist conferences. I realized it was a life journey in socialism. So I said, well, what was his experience that he could show up at 18 years old as a Marxist? He must have had a very different experience than any of the other kids at the exclusive Panaho school. So I noticed a very interesting passage in Dreams from My Father, where he said that he would visit Frank Marshall Davis's house, the communist propagandist, with his grandfather regularly since age 10. And he said, quote, uh, when I visited Frank, it was as though I was witnessing some complicated, unspoken transaction between Frank and my grandfather. Now that was pretty strange. So I decided to investigate Frank Marshall Davis. And right away you could see that Davis has a striking resemblance to Obama. Same height, 6'2", same forehead, same eyes, uh, the jawline, shocking resemblance, while the Kenyan Obama looked nothing like him. So I said, well, how could that be? And that started about a two-year investigation where I dug up archives of Frank Marshall Davis from two universities that were buried. Uh, I went to Hawaii and investigated Davis. I found 500 copies of the Honolulu Record, which is a newspaper, communist-run newspaper that Davis wrote for. And I found that uh, Davis was uh, not only the biological father of Barack Obama, but also the ideological father. Uh, in Davis's writings, which I include a lot of those newspapers in the, in the DVD, he flawlessly mirrored official Soviet propaganda. He was a member of the Communist Party. He actually came to Hawaii. He was sent to Hawaii by Communist Party USA in 1948 on the orders of the Kremlin, Comintern International, to help foment a communist takeover of the islands. At that time, uh, the Russians felt that Hawaii was an obstacle to Russian expansion in Asia. So Davis went to Hawaii and helped lead a uh, communist attempt at taking over the government with the ILWU, was the uh, International Longshoremen's Association. It eventually failed. Uh, but Davis went on to write uh, in favor of socialized medicine. He blamed America for starting World War II. He denounced the Marshall Plan. He supported uh, socialized medicine. Uh, he uh, wanted wealth redistribution. So I concluded at that time that the people who were asking where's the birth certificate were asking the wrong question. That the real question was who's the real father? And that's the key to understanding Barack Obama's plans for the country and uh, that's the key to understanding his ideology. But uh, I'm convinced, and you can look at the film and see all the evidence, that Davis is in fact the biological father. And I found uh, convincing uh, evidence that Obama's mother, Ann Dunham, had an intimate relationship with Davis. Found over 30 photos of, of Ann Dunham in various compromising states of nudity. We covered everything up with black bars to be respectful. But we show that there was an intimate relationship with Davis. I actually went to the house in Hawaii. There's a photo if you're on Skype. And we found, uh, I took the measurements, and there's Ann and all kind of compromising things. But we took the measurements and found that that was the house. And the photos are traced to Davis, who was an uh, amateur photographer. So on the one hand, there was absolutely, and there is absolutely no evidence that Obama's mother, Ann Dunham, ever even met the Kenyan Obama. No evidence they were married, no photos, nothing. We have a lot of evidence of an intimate relationship between Frank Marshall Davis, the communist propagandist, and Ann Dunham, Obama's mother. So the whole Kenyan thing is elaborate to throw us off and make us think that's what's going on. I believe it's all subterfuge to avoid a much, much darker, darker past. Now, now, I mean, let's be clear. Let's go back to Ann Dunham, though. 
I mean, right. I mean, it looks just like her. I've blown it up. These are not photoshopped. How did you get these photos? Go through all that. You've been to the house. You've looked inside. It matches the photos. This is bombshell. Yeah, it matches the floor. It matches the photos. Uh, and the photos are obvious evidence. I want to state one more piece of strong circumstantial evidence. Davis, of course, is known for writing a book called Sex Rebel Black. He uh, talks about 30 years of nefarious activities and uh, sexual deviation and uh, being interested in young girls and so on. So Anne Dunham, think about it, she takes Barry to Indonesia for a couple years. She comes back from Indonesia and tells Gramps, Obama's grandfather, something to the effect of, I'm going back to Indonesia, but you know the guy that I used to pose nude for that uh, engaged in all these activities I think young Barry should be raised by him. So when I go back to Indonesia, you should take Barry to this guy's house three times a week and spend his childhood with him. Now that makes no sense unless uh, Davis is the is the actual biological father. And let's be clear: the grandpa Obama says would take him over there. Oh, absolutely. We have I unbelievable. Spoke, I spoke to the neighbors, uh, former neighbors of Frank who are living, and they said that Barry, and they've been interviewed by other people, that Barry came over at age 10 about three times a week. And we have Obama himself in his book, uh, Dreams from My Father, where he chronicles and talks about Frank. Uh, listen, it's his dad. I can't believe this. This is so big. And I want to talk about where you got the photos of her in the uh, Betty Page stuff with the other women. I mean, this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. We'll be right back. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now, that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. Dreams from my real father, directed by Joel Gilbert, a story of reds and deception. But again, you got CIA people involved in all this it looks just like him and then there it is because we've got dreams from our father i checked it when i got this video he does talk about going to his house every week and him and his grandpa having this little secret and and then it, it and then his mother i mean it's her in these photos let's go back to this how did you get these photos joel these photos uh from several uh, researchers who have to go on name. They are actually uh, folks up in San Francisco who use something called uh, Usenet. It's these uh, binary photo uh, collections of all kind of erotic photos from the Betty Page era, from the uh, the old. And now they can use face scans off the photos to digitally analyze. And I know you, yeah, you blur the folks out, but they're they're in the film. You've got some of these sources in the film. Absolutely. We also show that uh, you can see the teeth of even as much as the photos look identical, you can even see there's a match for the teeth. And we've absolutely established both from the timeline, the house, the objects in the house, even the couch is an exact match to the couch that Frank Marshall Davis sat on in many photos. Oh, so yeah. I mean, you've got them. This is incredible. It's Obama's dad. Well, let me tell you what this means, though. Uh, people say, oh, that's his dad. Let me tell you what it means. Obama sold himself to America as the multicultural ideal. He was above politics because his father was a goat herder from Kenya, so he could bring people together. That's how the story went. So people perceived Obama as a nice man with an inspiring family story. This film demonstrates that it is much more likely that Obama has a deeply disturbing family background that he hid in order to hide a Marxist political foundation. If that's true, which we believe it is, uh, that means there was no improbable love that he talked about in his uh, convention speech. We have a probable liar in the White House and a probable forger of documents, all to hide this political foundation, which is now revealing itself as a socialist Marxist foundation that Frank Marshall Davis himself helped to nurture 
in Hawaii and in Chicago. Sure, but just to be clear, Frank Marshall Davis, the same house, the same couch. He is an admitted photographer, writes a book about his porno you know, type exploits. Uh, he, Obama admits, or Barry Sotero, that his grandfather would take him over there constantly when he was a kid. And then you've got the photos. I mean, this is open and shut. This should be massive international news right now. It, it should be. It's uh, quite disturbing that uh, the main news outlets, the so-called mainstream media, including some conservative ones, the only conservative site covering it is actually uh, the World Net Daily's done a great job. They even have a new magazine where they wish... Frank Marshall Davis on their World Net Weekly, a uh, happy Father's Day, because uh, they're the only one recognizing and covering it. And the reason for this is because Obama's election was not a sudden political phenomenon. It was the result of an American socialist movement that for 30 years has been quietly infiltrating the economy, universities, and the media, such that we've gotten to the point where the so-called media is simply a uh, extension of the Democratic Socialist Party and will not cover anything that reveals anything negative about Obama. We've come to a, a very frightening state of journalism and the First Amendment in this country. This is incredible. Your film just came out. Uh, are you authorizing folks to put this on access television or to have screenings if it's not for profit? Uh, we're inviting people to contact us on the website to schedule screenings so we can coordinate the screenings around the country. We have someone actually who's uh, coordinating a very large screening in Charlotte in North Carolina for the same week as the, Republic, uh, the Democratic Convention. So we're going to have a counter uh, convention going on. Oh, yeah, on. this should be handed out everywhere. I mean, I, mean, I would just recommend because uh, I know a little bit about viral campaigns, guerrilla campaigns. I would call for the screenings to be coordinated with press and stuff. That's great. But I would tell everybody to air it on Access Television as long as it has a link back to your website. Because I'm telling you, Access is one of the best secret weapons out there. If you okay. authorize people to do that, if they email you, they will put it on and you can reach millions because there are thousands of these channels. And in the aggregate, it's millions of viewers. Yeah, they should email us uh, and we'll, we'll approve those one by one. But you would think there are 100,000 journalists in this country, Alex, 100,000. You would think that one of them would want to win the Pulitzer Prize. All they would have to do is look at the research in this film and put it in a newspaper on a website, and you've won the Pulitzer Prize. You've got the story of the century. You showed that the President of the United States ran for president and was elected on a false background, which he intentionally promoted to hide an agenda that was irreconcilable with American values. This is the story that has to be told and that Americans should all buy the DVD. And, and I mean, even when he was a teenager in college, all these top communists treated Obama like he was royalty because he was the son of their God, the ultimate anti-American commie. We'll be right back. Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at Infowars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure. But if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. This is dangerous stuff. I've seen the film. My gut tells me this is Obama's daddy, and the evidence all points there. We know that guy in Kenya looks nothing like him. We know the State Department said it wasn't his dad and threw him out. Uh, we know Obama's got fake Social Security numbers. Well, the Social Security number of a dead person. The list goes on and on. The film is available by Joel Gilbert, Dreams of My Real Father, at InfoWarsShop.com or by calling 888-253-3139, and he could charge 30 bucks for a film like this. He charges $14.95, that's what we're selling it for. Get a free citizen rule book and Infowars.com, bumper stickers and stuff when you order it at Infowarsshop.com, or again, 
253-253-3139. Everybody needs to get this. Call your neighbors over and show it to them. This is a very important film. It sold me. Everything, just click, 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 click. It's like, that's it. That is it. That is it. That is it. And then, it's again, it's in his daddy's... Uh, oh, it just blows me away that that... He's got the same couch with his mother bending over on it. Uh, he says he goes over there when he's 10 every week with his grandfather. When he gets left there by his mother, he's the top commie leader involved in the foundations that later support Obama and treat him like royalty. When he's at Bill Ayer's house, when he's out of high school. I mean, this guy has absolutely been on the fast track with the commies and, and the big nasty globalist foundation them, uh, that are funding him. I mean, this is just disgusting uh, to see this going on. The voice is the same. The couch with uh, his dad, Frank Marshall Davis, I'm calling him his dad now, sitting on it, and then his mother, all spread eagle on there with other women. This just absolutely is devastating. And it needs to get out there. This is unbelievable. Dreams from My Real Father, Story of Reds and Deception, directed by Joel Gilbert. Uh, one program note, I'm not doing the nightly news this week because I am, um, I am trying to judge the reporter contest and make that announcement next week, which I will do next Thursday, maybe even earlier. I've already 99% chosen you know, the two reporters we're going to hire, the $10,000 in prizes, all the other stuff we're doing. Uh, but I should have added, there is a nightly news show every night. We had like an hour-long Max Kaiser interview premiere that was shot in Europe last night. A bunch of troops on the streets uh, in Connecticut doing uh, riot control uh, at the uh, Puerto Rico Day Parade. Uh, we have uh, j just a lot coming up tonight as well. We're having a lot of uh, old reports we did, best ofs, mixed in with new breaking stuff. And I'll be back Monday night. It's just that... We've been so busy, every once in a while I'm going to do these pit stops because once we officially launch, it's already getting picked up by some TV systems, cable, and also in Europe. They just download it off the site, give them permission. They edit it together and do weekly specials. Some cable systems are trying to take it live when we uh, you know, send it out. But when I put in the uplinks, everything else in the next phase, then we'll never be able to take a hiatus. Uh, and so I'm gearing up with more reporters, more people, more editors because we've got a skeleton crew and we're never able to finish all the new projects because we're so busy just handling what we've got in front of us. So the next level is coming soon at InfoWars Nightly News. We have a 15-day free trial running right now. PrisonPlanet.tv, weeknight, 7 o'clock Central. All my films, the video streaming live of this radio show, three hours a day. We call it InfoWars Live, all at PrisonPlanet.tv. And you financing us, we're not funded by big globalist foundations like Obama is. We're funded by sponsors and by you supporting us. Okay, going back to Joel Gilbert, maker of dreams from my real father. I'm just going to sit back for the next 10 minutes and give you the floor. I'm going to have to shut up because this is so riveting. I'm going to have to literally stick a sock in my mouth. And, and I've got so many questions that I'm going to open the phones up for specific questions for you. Okay, so listen, so. listeners, it's 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231, specifically for our guests. Joel, go ahead. Okay, let me cover a few other important things. Uh, the film details and chronicles a lot of evidence that, of course, the father is Frank Marshall Davis and what this means in terms of how Obama intentionally misled the public in order to get elected. But the film is an entire life journey. It's essentially a counter-autobiography. You can just replace Dreams from My Father, which is proven to be fairy tale, with Dreams from My Real Father, which is much, much closer to the complete truth. So we cover his entire life history, and I want to point out a very important area, because in this election, Obama keeps talking about how he inherited a problem state of economy because of George Bush's policies or the free market policies. Well, in fact, this uh, state of affairs came about primarily because of the subprime mortgage crisis, and this started during the Clinton administration, because it started actually in Chicago. And guess who was in on the subprime mortgage crisis? Creating the foundation for it was none other than Barack Obama. He lied in the debates with McCain when he said he only represented ACORN for the Motor Voter Act, which was a disaster on its own because 
We know the 9-11 hijackers had registered to vote under Motor Voter, as well as a lot of other voter fraud. But Obama also represented ACORN in suing Citibank, and he forced them to change their policies, their lending policies, to uh, reduce the criteria and charge them with racism. So Obama, when working for Davis Minor, forced Citibank to settle and lower their lending standards, and then ACORN wormed their way into the Clinton administration through Henry Cisneros, and it was Clinton who ordered the lowering of lending standards across all lending institutions, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. That's what led to the, the big crisis, subprime mortgage crisis that exploded at the end of the Bush administration. So it's Obama himself that helped start that process that we still are struggling with today. Uh, the socialists decided back in the 80s, and these were conferences that Obama attended, these socialist scholars conferences, that they would push the Democratic Party to the far left and force them to embrace socialism as their natural ideology through polarization. They would polarize the society amongst black and white, amongst uh, economic classes. Now they have a new strategy. They've stopped talking about problem solving. Now Obama wants to help middle class families. That's his new story. I have to make sure everyone understands, you don't have to hardly even Google it to realize that socialist economies do not have a middle class. They have one lower class where everybody's impoverished and the political elites control the wealth and simply consider everyone else as pawns. So when you see Obama talking about helping the middle class, he has disdain for the middle class. They cling to their guns and religion. And you can see that even some of the mainstream authors that are coming out, like uh, David Moranis in his book, he detailed uh, the fact that Obama's mother took him to Seattle when he was three weeks old. Uh, so the public is starting to realize that Obama's original nativity story is false. But they're not asking the next question. This film not only asks the question, provide, provides the answer. What uh, Moranis details, which we all knew this for some time, is that uh, Obama's story that he had a loving family of improbable love, and when his father went to Harvard when he was two years old, the family broke up. That's a lie. We know that uh, Obama's mother applied to move to Seattle in March of 1961, at the same time that the Kenyan Obama applied to extend his visa and for a work permit, and that three weeks after Obama's birth, he was in Seattle with his mother, while the Kenyan Obama remained in Hawaii for one more year. So knowing that this story is not true, we have to start looking at, well, what could be true? And what certainly is true is that uh, there was no Obama family. The Kenyan is not related to Barack Obama at all. I don't call him Barack Obama Sr. because there never was a junior. Don't forget they called him Barack Obama the second, which means another person. If it really was the son of, they would have called it junior. So the Kenyan Obama is absolutely not related to the President of the United States. And the problem is that he built his political career on this fable to hide a Marxist political foundation, which is completely unacceptable to the American public. Uh, I would like everyone to, again, check out the film, Dreams from My Real Father. And if you're on Skype, you can see that there's just no resemblance uh, to the Kenyan. Yes, sir. We've been, we've been showing the side-by-side -side photos and exhibits you sent us. But please, as some people just joined us, recap the entire story for people and the bombshell evidence, the couches matching, the house, the porno photos, the Betty Page stuff with his mother, uh, he, uh, Obama admitting he would go visit weekly as a child, uh, with Frank Marsh. I mean, this is incredible. Correct. There, basically, by Obama's own admission, there is no evidence that his parents were ever married or even ever met, except for a visit to Hawaii by the uh, Kenyan Obama, which I have detailed was related to a problem they were having with the scholarship to Punahou. When Obama went to Punahou School at age 10, he went there, we believe, on a scholarship for affirmative action. The problem was he had a white mother and a birth certificate that we believe said father unknown is how they left it because they couldn't show Frank Marshall Davis and the Kenyan Obama didn't want to be part of the responsibility for the child. So the Kenyan Obama had to show up in Hawaii in order to get him his scholarship at Punahou. But Obama admits that there's no evidence his parents were ever married. In his book, he says that even when the Kenyan Obama died, he had no evidence that could show he was a son to make a claim on the estate. 
we have a ton of evidence, photographic, circumstantial, timeline, witnesses, in Obama's own words, we have evidence of an intimate relationship between Ann Dunham, Obama's mother, and Frank Marshall Davis. We have the fact that Obama admits he was partially raised by Davis, and we have an ideological mirror between Barack Obama, the president, and Frank Marshall Davis's ideology that was anti-white, anti-American, anti-capitalism, that is dedicated to the undermining of all the foundations of what makes America great. Frank Marshall Davis was a very bitter, angry communist. And I believe we have the dream from his real father in the White House in the person of Barack Obama. And you also show how so many of Obama's speeches are word for word what Davis wrote in his own communist newspaper. I mean, it's stunning. This is his daddy. You put it all together. I mean, it's incredible. And you just happened to notice because of his speeches when he got excited and in his book uh, where he gets excited talking about this guy he would visit with and little hints that there was something strange with my grandfather and him, why I was being taken there. I mean, he again, criminals always hide things in plain view. They, they love to tell. They love to leave a little nugget. Yeah, Barack Obama dropped a number of, I call them breadcrumbs, throughout his book that he alludes to the fact that this Kenyan Obama is not related to him and that Davis is the only person he refers to in his autobiography by his real name of Frank. He refers to him 25 times again and again. Uh, so I think this is the key to... And the voice, and I mean, it's him. I mean, you know when somebody... look. A lot of the guys that work here have sons, and you see their sons, they look like them, they act like them. I mean, you know, you can tell when somebody's their daddy. I mean, right. you see my dad sitting next to me, he looks just like me, except he's got brown hair and not, uh, you know, dirty blonde hair. I, I mean, mean so the age spots, if you look at Obama's age spots coming out all over his face, identical to Davis. Obama is left-handed, as is Davis. They are literal mirrors of each other. And Obama has dropped us little breadcrumbs, but I get emails from people again and again who got advanced copies, and they say, thank you, this is the first cohesive understanding where all these little things that just weren't right, all of a and sudden, that's Exactly, and that's just how a disinfo operation works, is that they throw out, they have her say in speeches, when he was campaigning, we went back to where he was born, Kenya. They have it, 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 it's all obvious. Hillary puts it out that, oh, he wasn't really born here. So everybody follows that, knowing the whole time, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Well, I, uh, when I was making the film, I was very careful not to uh, reveal any of the content till it was finished. Now that it's out there, I think Americans finally have a chance to understand the real agenda of Barack Obama, and it is not problem solving and fair play. It is undermining the capitalist system and doing away with the foundation of America's greatness and exceptionalism to reduce America to a weak power in the world. And weak. well, exactly. I mean, Bush and all these guys are bad, but but I mean, Obama, twenty billion to ship General Motors to China. Obama carbon to everything a foreign saboteur couldn't do this good of a job destroying this country well unfortunately this is where we are today and if we didn't have such a corrupt media and a complete uh, lack of truth in the Democratic Party every time I listen to any Democrat there's a hundred percent blind blind support for Obama's agenda with total dishonesty look at how he's giving Libya and Syria to Al Qaeda he is not stupid. He knows, for instance, that if you run up trillions and trillions in deficit, he knows this will bankrupt and ruin the United States. He knows this. I want to play a clip. We're going to come back. This is, this is uh, with phone calls, keep you five minutes to the next hour if you can do it. Then we got Lord Monta coming up from the UN confab where they're openly calling for world government and the end of capitalism. But communism doesn't exist. Uh, this is Obama's mentor, one of Americans put in re-education camps and killed. This is Larry Grathwall at the highest levels of the underground with the weathermen, with Bill Ayers, how they were going to kill us in the camps. Here it is. I brought up the subject of what's going to happen after we take over the government. Uh, you know, we, we become responsible then for administrating, you know, 250 million people. And there was no answers. 
no one had given any thought to economics. How are you going to clothe and feed these people? The only thing that I could get was that they expected that the Cubans and the North Vietnamese and the Chinese and the Russians would all want to occupy different portions of the United States. They also believed that their immediate responsibility would be to protect against what they called the counter-revolution. And uh, they felt that this counter-revolution could best be guarded against by creating and establishing re-education centers in the Southwest, uh, where we would take all the people who needed to be re-educated into the new way of thinking and teach them how things were going to be. I ask, well, what is going to happen to those people that we can't re-educate, that are die-hard cap capitalists? And the reply was that they'd have to be eliminated. And when I pursued this further, they estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill 25 million people. I want you to imagine sitting in a room with 25 people, most of which have graduate degrees from Columbia and other well-known educational centers, and hear them figuring out the logistics for the elimination of 25 million people. And oh. they were dead serious. Oh, what's the document uh, I got two months ago? The Army confirmed re-education camps have been set up. That's at Infowars.com. Mm, we're going to come back with our guest and your calls, Joel Gilbert. Dreams of My Real Father, available at Infowarshop.com. Stay with us. Concept in New York, you're on the air with our guest, the maker of dreams from my real father. Go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Concept. You're on the air from, um, from New York. Yes, just to give you an idea of who I am, I was at the Bilderberg protest with the boombox and the microphone. You remember me on Yes, Saturday? I remember meeting you, sir. You have a question for our guest. Good to, good to talk to you. Yes, it's, it's actually uh, more of a comment. Uh, just from reading Bloodlines of the Illuminati, how all the presidents are linked to bloodlines of uh, ancient rulers of the world. Uh, I just want to make a comment that, you know, his illegitimacy uh, is definitely a compromise because they want to keep him on a short leash. And uh, if he doesn't go with the program, am I still on air? Yes, sir, man. I'm really trying okay. to let, yeah. Anyways. Uh, they want to keep him on a short leash so that if he does go against their program, they can just say, oh, he wasn't legitimate, and then make everything that he's done null and void. Uh, I also want to make the comment that if we, the reason why we don't really know who his family are is that he's not really our first African-American president because he doesn't have lineage that goes back to slavery. You know what I mean? His, his all right, all right. Listen, I hear you. Uh, do you have any comments on that? Uh, yeah, my, my comment is uh, the main risk we're looking at is uh, things uh, that have to do with blackmail from other governments. If I could figure this out simply by asking the right question, once I asked the right question, who's the real father, I found the information. So when I saw that video of Obama leaning over to Medvedev and he said, after the election, I'll be more flexible. And then Medvedev said, I'll tell Vladimir. That made my skin crawl because Putin, former KGB head, he must know all of this, as do many other intelligence agencies. We know the United States lost its manufacturing industry. It's, it's suspected because Obama, not Obama, Clinton gave the Chinese the most favored nation status in the 90s. And the Panama Canal, it just gets worse. Real fast, Bill in California, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Hi, Joel. Uh, my question is this. Uh, I've read uh, Jerome Corsi's book, The Abomination, a good book. And uh, if it turns out that Davis is the father, how do you see, uh, Joel, how do you see your research uh, complementing Jerome Corsi's research? Because, of course, his book is written under the assumption that Kenyon Obama was the father. Well, that's the thing. I mean, Corsi now is changing his whole thing. He knows Obama isn't who they said, but now he understands, because he worked in intelligence, that this was an elaborate fraud within a fraud within a fraud. That's standard procedure at these levels. Uh, and, I mean, Corsi believes that what has been developed by Joel is accurate. Yeah, Corsi and I have uh, discussed all of this several times. Uh, we were uh, doing some joint research, and we shared some research, 
And uh, he concurs with me at this point that Davis is the most likely father. And even for anyone, you can look at the video, and it's so obvious the timeline. It's ridiculous. Everybody, it's his dad. You can look at him, the voice. He, he hung out with him as a kid. Even, <laughs> even beyond that, it, the film demonstrates throughout the whole, his whole life story that Davis is his ideological father, which is even more dangerous than the biology. Oh, but the mannerisms, it's his dad. Anything else, uh, Bill? Um, that was all. Thanks for taking my call. Okay, thank you. Let's jam in one more, and he can answer it when we come back. Uh, Damien in South Carolina, go ahead. Yes, um, Mr. Gilbert. My one question is this. Um, we, we who believe what's going on here is to be true is what you're talking about. Often meet Republicans, Democrats, fellow Americans who just are like, oh, you're a birther or you're a truther on the 9-11 issue, whatever. What is the one fact that we can just throw in their face like a silver bullet that will make them believe? What is his mother doing on his couch spreading her legs? We'll be right back. We'll see what his answer is. If you just joined us, you got to see the film to know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I respect Corsi. He's a serious guy. When he told me he thought that he thought this was accurate, I said, really? And I had to look at it. And I mean, I, I, I'm convinced and my gut's convinced, not just my intellect. And my gut, well, it's never been wrong. This is, his, this is Obama's daddy. Only problem in my life is when I don't follow my gut. And let me tell you, this is his daddy. Uh, a hardcore communist that he hung out with as a child that, uh, you know, that mommy lived by and that grandpa would bring him over to see. I mean, this is just incredible. And it's his ideological father, all of it. Dreams from my real father. The director and researcher, Joel Gilbert, the DVD discounted the film at Infowars.com or Infowarsshop.com or 888-253-3139. We only got about four or five minutes left. What is the most, what do you say when somebody just says, birther? Uh, I, mean, I mean, how do you respond to that? I mean, first they said his name wasn't Barry Sotero. Now they admit that. The records are sealed. Uh, you know, I mean, they're, const they're, they're covering something up. You have stumbled right into it, hiding in plain view. What do you say to somebody? Well, I tell them uh, it's so convoluted what Obama has created. It's impossible to say one little factoid. That's why I put the film together as a 90-minute full Obama history where you can see how the story all puts together. So what I tell people is simply, Obama is taking you for a fool. The socialists, they use black people, they use the middle class, and they discard them later after they wage their war against the middle class and against any chance that minorities have of being successful by eliminating... Well, the socialist leaders are always eugenicists that hate black people. Well, Obama, just like Frank Marshall Davis, was in charge of recruiting blacks to the Communist Party in Chicago and Hawaii, and he was rejected. Didn't work very well because blacks were religious people. They rejected communism because it was atheist. Obama went into these communist organizations in Chicago as an organizer to recruit black people because they thought a, a front man with a black face could succeed where the communists had failed. Well, that's what Margaret Sanger said. She said, we gotta hire blacks, pose as liberals to kill these weeds. Uh, let's take a quick call here. Uh, let's talk to Julio in Illinois, uh, in Chicago, speaking of the uh, you know, the Chicago mob. Uh, Julio, you're on the air. Yes, uh, this all makes sense. Joel, we all have to have prayers for this man. This is unbelievable. I'm shocked. I'm still shocked at hearing that Weather Underground comment. But anyway, uh, this all makes sense. You talk about Marshall's... Uh, you know, sex craze, you know, sex rebel book, and Obama's mother and her escapades. Uh, Barry Satoro has the same type of tendencies here in Chicago with Rahm Emanuel, the down low club, and uh, man's country. And uh, I just have a question, Joel, how can I get in contact with you to set up a screening here in the second Yeah, by city? the way, uh, uh, I know Julio. He is a reporter. Uh, so I guess you just email uh, Joel, correct? Our website, it's uh, obamasrealfather.com. You can send us a screening request or uh, check all the different press reviews are up there. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Absolutely. And uh, you can also get the DVD there if you'd like as well. We have them right here at infowars.com. That supports both of us. But either way, we got to get this out or we have no future. Thank you, Julio. We're almost out of time. Jam one more in. Richard in Canada, 30-second question. Go. Uh, how do you think Obama's ideological background fits into his global globalist agenda of being a of uh, being on the UN Security Council and going to war at the behest of the United Nations? Yeah, what do you make of that? Like putting our military under UN command? 
Well, uh, Obama, it, it, as communism is a universalist uh, ideology, as is Islamism, they, there's a nexus between Islamism and communism and Marxism. They both believe that American capitalism is an enemy that has to be destroyed. So by putting the United States at the behest of the UN, it's part of the internationalist uh, agenda. All right, we're going to have to get you back on next week to talk about this. Joel Gilbert, uh, the film available at InfoWars.com, Dreams uh, from My Real Father. Thank you so much, and be safe. We'll, we'll talk to you next week. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back with Lord Moncton from Rio. Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.